Hey everyone, I am here with Andre Robinson and I am super excited to talk with him. He is an actor and voiceover talent you've heard on Disney Junior, Nickelodeon, Netflix, and more. Now, his newest project is on Disney Plus and I loved it so much, but I wanna know how excited are you that Cheaper by the Dozen is now out and being shared with the world? I'm super excited, you know, um, it means a lot. Uh, we we worked our butt ass with this film and I'm glad so far a lot of people actually liked it. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. I like Thank especially you. the conversations that take place in the movie are not lost on anyone. Mm -hmm. And it's really something that was needed to be said or needed to be talked about. And I love that it was addressed in the movie. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your audition process for DJ? Um my audition process was actually pretty cool. Uh, I went in the booth, uh, I did the audition about two weeks later, I got the call back. And then I think three weeks later, I um, did the director session, which I did with um, Gail Lerner, the director. She was super nice. And um, I actually did a little bit of improv, which was perfect because um, that's when I started my improv class. So it really helped with this role. And then I think a month later, I booked it. That is amazing. Um, Especially because you guys also filmed during COVID. How was yeah. that experience like? Uh, pretty annoying, actually. <laughs> I mean, we we could, we, we barely could sit with each other at lunch. We had to be six feet away apart. We broke that rule, obviously, when they weren't looking. Um, we had to wear the mask the whole entire time until... Um, I mean, when we were filming, we took them off, but all the time we had to keep them on. But I mean, that's just safety reasons. It doesn't really care. Yeah. Now, DJ is a very comic book, nerdy, sweet kid. Mm. Now, how similar are you to DJ and how do you differ from DJ? I mean, I mean, my whole background in my room is legit like comics and toys and stuff legit you can see black panther in the back over there so not not too different at all i would say um we both love comic books and marvel i mean when i went to that set this man had like like fifty thousand books full of comics i don't i don't go that crazy but i, I still love the characters and stuff I love that. One of my favorite scenes was at dj's birthday party spoilers mm -hmm. obviously if you guys have not seen it um and you make this grand entrance to get Talia to notice you. Mm -hmm. How did it feel getting in touch with your goth emo side? Uh, it was actually a lot of fun. I never thought I could pull it off, but everyone, even Gad was like, you know what, you need to do this on a regular basis. I was like, I might think about it, but obviously that's not me, but still it was really fun. And I had a wonderful time doing it. Um, we shot that like five times, slow motion kind of got a little cringy a little bit at times especially because they were like okay stay stay focused on Lola's I was like ah, I gotta be staring at you the whole entire time it's kind of weird but we we made it through so it was one of my favorite scenes because even I was I took a, I took a seat back just like yeah <laughs> okay like I don't know what it was it was just like because I, I love painting at the disco, Fall Out Boy, all that, those types of things. So yeah. watching this character who's very into comic book kind of embrace that world, even if it's just to impress a girl, it was interesting to see. Was good, yeah. Also, your heart was just like, oh, he I'm actually go he's played yeah. at it. Yeah. Um, no, that was a super fun scene to do. Um, I'm glad they got the music score right because me and my friends were like, okay, it's gonna be a good scene. It's just like, they can't mess up that music score because it was gonna be something else before the, the music score that was in the movie, but it was still it was still pretty good. And another one of my favorite parts in the entire movie was the discussions mm -hmm. of how people of color mm -hmm. Are treated mm -hmm. like you're like how you'll be seen with your uh with the parents talking about dj's character or even horatio's mm -hmm. character being treated and getting profiled even though he's indian the microaggressions that were raised in the film how did that feel for you even though like certain parts you weren't a part of but seeing it as a whole being i mean seeing as a whole i mean i was legit in the background of when they did that scene so i heard a lot of it i was inside the the um 
the house, which which is really cool. But it's very impactful. And it's like because this this type of movie is also a fun, friendly family movie, but it also shows truth and real life as well. Everything everything in that movie is basically what's going on today. Yeah, it was really cool. One of my favorite lines that you had, because I laughed so mm-hmm. hard when you said it because it just made sense, but at the same time, it was just like, okay. Um, it was in the restaurant scene when you- Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, she was like, oh yeah, I'm a child. Yeah. Yes, it's okay. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like, so you you rarely see people, um, children serving you. So, I mean, it would be a little confusing, but I mean, if they're doing their job, they're doing their job. That was fun as well. Uh, that was the a really, whole, the whole crew it took me off for a second. I was just like, he's not wrong, but yeah. it's funny. And I am like, I was here for it. And you also had some amazing, you had just twins all over there. You could, like, there's at least six sets of twins, or mm-hmm. at least for Michael's character and the other, uh, Luna. And uh, yeah, uh, Luna, I think, was Mimi. Uh, yeah. Michael, sorry. We we call her Mimi. Uh her character and then the homie Leo that was playing twins and then yeah, the twins and then and then Crash and Bash, they were playing twins as well. And yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, four sets of twins, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about them too. Yeah. I mean, I didn't do scenes with them, so I totally forgot, but yeah. Which is interesting because they haven't actually been side by side acting since nineteen ninety seven. Mm. Oh, that's crazy. So that was, I've heard of them before, but like, I mean, we got to meet them like I think once at the restaurant, but I, I didn't know it went that far, that deep. Yeah, they, and they acting put on a show yeah. back in the 90s called Sweet Valley High based on a book series. Oh. And that was the last time you saw them act together. Oh, that's what, okay. That makes sense. Okay. So it was for me, my heart was just like, oh my gosh, like I haven't seen them side by side. Okay. Yeah, it took yeah. me back for a second because it was just like, even though like I didn't yeah, watch I never knew about on, that. I watched the series like later uh, in life. Mm-hmm. It was just fun to see these two. It was a good, it was a good moment, huh? It was yeah. a nice moment. And mm-hmm. um, I want to know because I'm a huge Gabby fan. What did it feel like having Gabrielle Union play your mom? She was awesome, honestly. Um, I had a wonderful time with her. Um, me and Journey, uh, Journey Brown, uh, my sister, uh, we cracked jokes with her. She, she just had a fun sense of humor and she felt like a good mom. She was a stern mom too, which was which was good because Zach was the funny dad and was like, okay, guys, we have to work, but I'm gonna still make you guys laugh. And Gab was like, uh, calm down guys so it, it, it worked all throughout yeah. one of my favorite things about the movie was also the united front the parents would have in front of the kids yeah and they would have those discussions like, together outside so mm-hmm. whatever one parent said they would go with it but behind closed doors we need to have a longer conversation yeah and also bringing up the those kind of conversation when you have interracial marriages because that's not really seen talked about or yeah it's not talked about at all and it's not common in most films so it's really impactful for most people who have had interracial um marriages before I hope I hope it shined a light on interracial marriages now I know you have a big family how was it doing this movie being in a big family like this I know family is very uh I mean I'm in a family of five but it was insane with a family of legit 12, including the dogs in that whole bed scene. We uh, uh, we had to rile up the dogs because uh, Barack Obama like jumped off the bed, I think like three times. So <laughs> it, it took a while to get that scene, but it was it was cool. I had I had a fun time and everybody was super chill. Everyone was nice to us. Um, I, have, I met amazing friends along the way who I still talk to to this day. And um, yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. Do you have a favorite scene that you guys filmed? Uh, yeah, I think my God scene with me walking was my favorite scene. I love that scene a lot. And it has a huge special place in my heart. I mean, I wouldn't go golf again, but still, I mean, <laughs> shoot, if it was a golf party and someone invited me, I'm like, ah, hey guys, I need that costume back. So 
that was a good scene yeah i think also the character of dj especially having Mm -hmm. seemed to have this special relationship with paul zach braff's character but also realizing that his dad biologically is this famous athlete Mm -hmm. and they have nothing in common and it took like you like your character standing up for himself saying you don't know anything about me and i loved looking because it's a big family but there's also this bigger blended family aspect to cheaper by the dozen that you guys did and that also needs to be a conversation that i w- was love to see especially because father and son relationships are very important mm-hmm, then yeah. you have the father who raised you and then the father who's kind of comes around and is trying to come around often wants to know more about Sorry, you but yeah. doesn't really know much yeah, yeah. And I, I thought that was a really great aspect that they touched on too, because like oh, this movie has a lot of moving parts, but all of it works together to benefit mm-hmm. the movie. Yeah, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of deep parts in the movie that was, I mean, very true. But you also have that comedy that brings it all together as well, so you're not like all down in the dumps as well. Now, if there was a sequel, they, like, mm-hmm. I'm going to throw it out into the cosmos. You know, if there was a sequel to this, what do you want for DJ? What do you want DJ's storyline to be in that? I mean, if there was a sequel, I hope there's a sequel. I mean, we've been, we've been putting it in the director's ear for a long time. So, um, I mean, I just want growth with the character. I mean, he, he's been through a lot, especially with his father, but now I think you know, at the end, um, his father kind of gets what he wants, gets what he likes now. And plus, DJ got the girl, my boy. I mean, <laughs> come on, let's go. So, um, and my mom kept saying, how, how about your brother doesn't go to Paris? So, I mean, there, there's a fun idea. The Bakers but, in Paris, I don't even know. Bakers in Paris, I don't know how that would go, but. I just feel like there'd be an international incident somehow. <laughs> Not like in a bad way, but just yeah, yeah. You know, oh yeah, okay. Maybe something like going wrong or the, something. The amount, got, got, getting lost or something. There's a lot of things that could go wrong leaving the country. I just, I would be down to see it. Um, I just, like, I can imagine, but you can't imagine. Yeah. Until you see it, that's like the vibe I get. Like, I can't uh, imagine, yeah. but I can at the same time. Yeah. Now, I also, your voiceover work is amazing. Now, a lot of people might recognize you from Disney Junior on Doc McStuffins as Donnie McStuffins. How did you feel coming onto that project and become doing Donnie? I mean, that was my first series regular project. I had a a, a great time doing it. Um, I met I met my legit sister now. I mean, she's not my sister, but I call her my sister, Leia. Oh, um, I'm just I haven't talked to her in a while. I haven't talked to her in a while, but she is my legit sister um the cast was amazing I had a fun time playing it that was when my voice was a little small or it's not small just not what it is today and um uh, our director taught us a lot taught me a lot um with the voice acting game especially with pronouncing like your t's because I would always say that so in like voiceover work you would always have to say that so that was helpful as well and um the voice and the energy and the happiness of that whole role it was it was awesome i love it and did you watch doc mcstuffins prior to you getting done back then yeah i used to watch uh doc mcstuffins and um um my the old dommy donnie the original donnie uh before his voice changed that was actually a cool friend of mine and we uh we were going to do a tv series regular I think it was called like 48 hours till Monday and he was going to be my brother, but it didn't get picked up. But so I kind of met him prior to before I got mixed up. Oh, that's like a full circle moment though too. That's so amazing. Now you also are part of the Loud House. You voice Mm -hmm. the character of Clyde, best friend to Lincoln and season six just premiered two weeks ago. Yeah. What do you like the most about being Clyde? I mean, it was a fun experience. I mean, I passed down that role to Jazeer Bruno. That is a cool kid. Um, but I'm not done with The Loud House yet. Um, I just got offered a guest role on one of the episodes of season six, which was awesome. But back then at Clyde, I had an amazing time. 
Um, every single Lincoln is now my friend to Collins, to my homie Tex, to now my homie Asher. Um, I met I met my idol Tara Strong over there, and oh, um, she is she's awesome. She's super <laughs> nice. She's There's super not many nice. words to describe how she has changed voiceover she, acting. Her voice is industry. insane. She is the voiceover guru. So is uh, Tom Kenny, um, the voice of SpongeBob. That is very true. What did it feel like being surrounded by some of these voiceover veterans? Did you um, when did I first you, did a job you called? Know? When I first did a job called Nico and the Sword of Light, I was legit next to every single voiceover veteran. And they taught me a lot, but it's like I also picked up my own pace as well. I wasn't carried on by that character, but I met Kevin Michael Richardson. I met Kari Walgren. I met uh, Tom Kinney, um, um, Jim Cummings, who was um, the bug on Princess and the Frog, and a bunch of other characters I was with. Almost everyone, almost everyone. I think John DiMaggio as well, who is also another voiceover guru. Nice. And it was cool because some of them tied on together with uh, The Loud House, which was cool. And you also are Hansel in The Tale of Dark and Grim, Dark and Grim on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like being Hansel? Because this is a fairy tale many of us grew up with. So I'm really curious to how that experience was for you. I had a fun time playing Hansel, um, which was crazy was when I first did an audition, uh, I, I felt honored because everyone, legit, everyone across the world auditioned for that job. And it's like, they picked me, which is insane to me. I'm like, okay, thank you guys. Um, me, uh, I had a great time with the cast. I had a great time with the directors, Rainy, is a good friend of mine. We had a fun time as Hansel and Gretel and we kind of made up a couple lines along the way so it could feel real like brother and sister. And also this is a fairy tale as well. So you you have to put in some drama. I mean, this is based, Hansel and, A Tale Dark and Grim is basically the real truth of Hansel and Gretel because they've been Disney watching it, if, if that makes sense. So A Tale Dark and Grim is a little bit more darker than um, most animated films. It's a uh, TV, TV, I think seven? I think it's to be TV 14 in my opinion, but um, I had a fun, fun time with that role. Now, do you have a dream role on your acting bucket list? Yes, um, I recently did a, I can't say it, but I did a huge, <laughs> huge, huge voiceover role in like voiceover, my voiceover history. And I did the callback for it and they're deciding mid-April, which is insane. That's and amazing. I know I cannot wait to hear about it. Thank you. Oh, what about live action? Do you have a dream live action role? Anything Marvel really. I mean, I've always been a Marvel <laughs> fanatic. So I am mean, like they filmed me in Black Panther too. I know that's being filmed in Atlanta right now. Um, but I don't know, just, just, um, I don't know many African-American characters in Marvel. I do know some like Ironheart, like that's yeah. a female African-American, um, superhero, but male, I, I don't know a lot of, but I mean, they could, I they mean, could throw me in there. I, I could, I could find out the character in two miles. seconds. You don't know. You never yeah. know. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that would, that would be sick. A lot of people say I look like Miles Brown. I don't really You see do. It. I'm sorry. As soon as you said Marvel, I was just like, are you just trying to say you want to be Miles? Because I see it. I'm here no, it was insane because at Disney World, I was at Disney World uh, to do an interview for Chief Brother Dozen, uh, and I was in line to get a turkey leg, and someone was like, are you Miles Brown? I was like, nah, I wish, man. <laughs> I mean, we, we, there's still time. We yeah. know he's getting introduced. We just don't know when. So there's hope. Yeah. I'm down for it. I, I'm down for it. Shoot. <laughs> I mean, my Splash Spider-Man shoot. I mean, they, they threw that little teaser in um, Spider-Man No Way Home. So, I mean, no, I don't want to spoil, but I mean, come on. You guys should have seen that movie. Come on. <laughs> that is true. At this point, we are in March. If you have not seen Spider-Man No Way Home, it is not my home. Go watch it. 
But I want to know when did you go, go watch it. I, um, I understand spoilers for the Batman though. I mean, that just came out, so I understand. That is true. Three hours. It was an amazing. It actually is one of my favorite. So good. Bruce Wayne. So I one mean, of my favorite depictions. It's not better than the. I mean. Mm. The Dark Knight still has a special place in my heart, but that's because of Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger was just an amazing villain. As Joker, that was just the best Joker in the universe. What, but when Next it comes time. to, at least when it comes to me, for the best Bruce Wayne, as much as oh I, yeah, Robert Pattinson. I love every single that. last person who has yeah, had Robert a Pattinson version of Batman. Yeah, I'm still going to choose. I'm sorry, Rob Pattinson's version of the Batman is always who, or so of Bruce Wayne is always how I've always wanted Bruce Wayne to be played. And plus, that's, that's a younger Bruce say. Wayne, which we always wanted. Right, and that's yeah. not to say that the philanthropist, playboy... Mm-hmm. It didn't you know, show that really in the... I mean, that's more Christian Bale's uh, Batman. His and, was and a lot a, more just depth. Cool. But I, mean, that, I that feel like cool. Bruce Wayne has never gotten over what happened to his parents. And I, I mean, that makes sense, though, because, uh, I mean, it's a younger Batman. So this just happened. He was two years into just being Batman. That movie was just insane. But I'll just let I mean, you carry on with questions. I could talk about Marvel and DC if I wanted to for like years. I mean, years we both could. I am. A, I know that's that's my wheelhouse. Um, so another question is, yeah. Um, are you have? Do you have any other new projects besides the voiceover that you mentioned that we can't talk about that you have coming up that your fans can get excited about? Uh, I've been doing um, a couple behind the scene work for. Uh, a couple loop group jobs uh like i said i was doing uh, a guest star for the loud house still waiting on that big project and i'm also going to be doing something for another disney project but that's behind the scenes as well it's not it's not live action but yeah so you mentioned loop groups now also based on mm-hmm. your IMDb credits, if those are to be believed, you have a you have some loop group work in your in your you know wheelhouse. But can you some stuff loop some loop stuff is me? not in there though because I did um one of my favorite was I actually did a, a loop group Marvel movie which was the Eternals. I did a little boy stuff in there too which was fun. That's awesome. I love the Eternals still my favorite. Yeah. And that, um, a lot of people don't like it, but I like the story of it. It was cool. Yeah the story is great. Yeah. We, we can, that's going to be a whole conversation. Yeah, I need to start yeah. to um, yeah. However, can you tell us, for those who don't know a lot about the voiceover world, what being in a loop group work means? Being in a loop group is basically those characters, like that, that background you hear in every single movie, like, hey, guys, come on. Hey, there's dinner. But, I mean, obviously it's focused on the main characters, but there still needs to be death. So it sounds like it's a high school, like, high school, I don't know, lunch dinner or uh, amusement park. Those little sounds you hear are basically us. We're just behind the scenes in the booth. Back then it was just a whole loop group and we would be in the booth, but now it's a little different. I mean, I'm in my closet now. I have my own home studio. So we usually do that there. Okay, professional, I see you. (laughs) That's amazing. Well. Before we get out of here, for yeah. those who have not seen Cheaper by the Dozen, what do you want them to know about the movie? Um, Cheaper by the Dozen is is a, is our own spin of the movie. I mean, you can't say it's the original 2003 because it's not. It's it's more representation and more what's going on today, but also still a little kind of like Cheaper by the Dozen, but it's it's fun it's awesome um it, it's cool to hang around with um it's great for movie nights if you if you want to laugh um the the cast is different um compared to the 2003 version but in my opinion i think it's better i mean i still love steve martin come on don't don't get me wrong but i i i love gab and zach as well but that's what i would love to say about the movie well, guys, if you have not seen Cheaper by the Dozen, it is now out on Disney+. Plus. You guys should check it out. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Of course, I- no problem. Yeah.